Okay, we're back, and remember we're in uh, et slash etc slash init.d, and we're looking at some of the scripts in this area. These scripts can be very, very useful um, for if you want to start up services and kill services. Let's take a look at, um, of course, you need to run all of these from root because um, nearly all of these have, um, I mean, root is the guy. But uh, let's look at some of these here. Um, let's look at Apache. Whoop. Uh, well, we won't look at Apache because I didn't install Apache on this system. Let's look at um, my SQL, though. That's installed on the system. Now, um, sometimes there are usually three or four um, arguments you can put on all of these commands. Generally, there's an argument called start, and there's an argument called stop. And on nice systems <laughs> like SUS, there is also one called status that will tell you whether the system is up or down. Um, so this says that MySQL is not running. If I want to start MySQL, all I do is I type start. And that will start up MySQL, assuming it's been installed right and things like that. I don't think I've ever started up MySQL before on this system since I installed this system. So I don't know what it will do. But if we type status, OK, MySQL is running. It's probably not very usable because I haven't done all the setup configurations. And, and so um, um, I, I wouldn't recommend using it. But that's the concept. And um, and many of these, starting them up, they are ready to run. As another example is SSH, SSHD. If somebody wants to use a secure shell to log on to your system, they can only do that if you have a daemon running that is basically looking at that um, port saying, OK, uh, I'm ready. Well, it's the SSH equivalent to the Getty commands. Uh, it's got to say, OK, I'm ready. I'll take you if you come. And I'll check and see if you're a really valid person. And you know, and um, so let's see if SSH is running. Uh, indeed, I'm surprised. I thought it was running. It's not running. Let's start her up. Um, OK, it's now running. Anybody could anybody with proper access rights could then log into my system using SSH. Now that assumes a few got use here. It does assume that I've also opened the firewall or that I'm not running a firewall um, and maybe that I'm routing the traffic properly so it actually can get to my machine. But if it can get to my machine, if I've opened up everything, then the fact that I started this means it can run. If I want to stop it, I can stop it. Simple as that. Um, and we might as well stop SQ, my SQL because I'm not about because I'm not going to use that for the near future. Um, okay. That is a quick and dirty way of uh, starting and stopping services. The book goes into a lot of detail on, um, on um, and, oh, and also the, uh, nearly all the uh, GUIs associated with the major distributions have a way of starting and stopping uh, services and doing it so it happens on reboot every time. What I did just here is a one-time start the service. Every time I reboot the system, I'd have to start the service the same way, or I'd have to write a script that would start the service, or something of that type. Um, the book goes into much more detail and talks about the um, uh, runtime configuration scripts. Um, those get kind of complex, but they're well. Um, they're well described in the book, and I'm going to leave it at the book. Uh, leave the book's description. I'm going to leave it to the book to describe those. Um, however, I want to talk about one more config. Uh, one more um, 
a startup script that um, is not described in the book that I think is critically important. If you notice there are startup scripts in this area, there are a lot of boot scripts. Boot, um, oh, bootload modules, boot um, proc, boot swap, and the truth is I haven't read all those. I'm not sure what all of them do. But the question is, suppose you have a command that you want to run when the system boots and no other time. Then how do you implement that thing? Well, I could use cron, but how in the devil would I use cron? Well, I always say I could use cron, but I get to thinking about what I'd have to do to use cron. No, I can't use cron. I only want, cron is the job scheduler. I only want to do this when the system boots, and not all the time. I could go through and study the um, um, whatever this system is with the S and the K uh, scripts, the runtime configuration scripts area. And some books will recommend that. I, I do not recommend that because um, I think it's too hard. It works fine if you're writing something like Apache that's going to be given to everybody in the US or in the world. And it's going to be on everybody's system. Then that is a great system. But it's a pain if all you have is this one little program and you want to start that up and, and on, on boot. And you know it's just this little thing that you hacked out one night. And, and that doesn't make any sense. What makes sense is putting it just editing one of these files in here and putting it into one of those files. The guy that I always use, and maybe it's wrong, maybe I should occasionally use some other file, but, but I like to keep them in one file so that I don't need to make many changes when I build a new system. So there's only one area I need to work with. And the one I use is boot.local. Let's look at boot.local. It is a file that, well, it has um, a lot of comments in it and nothing else. As I recall, the, the file says it's a born shell file, um, born and bash shell being almost identical. Um, it says um, down here, script with local commands to be executed from in it on system startup. Here is where you should add things that should happen directly after booting and bef uh, before going into the first run level. Well, I'm a little, in practice, I'm a little sloppy with that, even if this is something I want to run, you know, uh, at run level five or whatnot. I, I will slip it in here. Maybe run level five isn't going yet, so I will put a sleep in there for a few minutes. So the thing I want to happen doesn't happen until run level five gets started. Um, and I make all my changes that I want to, to customize a system, the runtime changes in this file. And it works quite well. And um, um, and so, like, I usually give out assignments that say, um, um, write a little script that only happens at boot time. This is the file to, um, um, uh, to modify. This is where it happens. It's far easier than other ways of doing it. And, uh, and I think it works quite well. It's never screwed me up. So. OK, um, that ends everything I have to say about system initialization. Um, I want to talk about X windows, but that's, yeah, uh, that's another video. So bye-bye.